Well, Mr. Griffin, uh, thanks to you and to your staff for the job you perform for the undertaking that you're in uh, already in process with and uh, I, I don't think any of us would uh, wish it on anybody that they had to make the reviews that you're having to do. Let me just ask, had the VA listened to prior IG reports and fixed the problems you had pointed out, would we be here today talking about Phoenix or talking about any facility? No. The problems with NVA seem to be rooted in two things. Um, one is the culture that has been created, and I think that culture has been created because there was a lack of accountability, and that was evidenced by these waiting lists that uh, operated outside of the electronic system and other things. Had, had they just addressed those, we probably wouldn't be here investigating Phoenix to the degree that we are. Is that an accurate statement? That is accurate. And, and as I mentioned previously, and even in other areas, uh, we wouldn't close a recommendation unless we believed that they had taken the appropriate steps to resolve the issue. When you get, when you get a copy uh, in 2010 of this mandate to knock off the manipulation, and then three months later, you get an updated scheduling procedure as a VHA directive, at that point, you would, you would believe that people got it and that it would be implemented and it would be implemented to the letter. And what, 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 what do you conclude or how could somebody conclude within VA not to require certification uh, last year based upon all the warning signs you have provided for them? I think the next panel can probably better explain what the rationale was. Uh, I think there had been plenty of warning that this was going on, and uh, I, I thought the certification was an excellent thing to, to make people declare, yes, I've reviewed it in my facility, and, and yes, our waiting times are according to the policies and procedures of the department. Now, you've been involved for six plus months at investigating the current list of things. And I know you can't get into specific takeaways, but let me ask, what have you learned about the VA over that period of time, not down to the specifics? Referring to the 93 other facilities? Well, we've, we have some initial um, reporting on those um, as of Yesterday, we have given the department 12 um, individual reports for them to examine and, and determine what action would be appropriate in view of the specifics of each of those reports. The rest of our 93 are still uh, very much active, but I, I can tell you that at 42 different facilities of those 93, we, we found the practice of using the next available date as a desired date. It's something that was reported on in our interim report and in the final report. We have 19 facilities where an appointment was canceled and rescheduled on the same day for the same appointment time for the sole purpose of giving the appearance of a shorter waiting time. We've had 16 facilities that had paper wait lists as opposed to being on an EWL. We had 13 facilities where managers lied to my investigators about what was going on at their facility. Do, do, do your investigators conclude that all of these individuals came up with these deceptive practices on their own, or was there some overarching um, initiative that um, some level of management uh, actually um, pushed? It's a combination. Frankly, when something is going on for as many years, not everywhere, but at a number of the facilities, it almost becomes the accepted way of doing scheduling. And again, when you have uh, lowest level employees involved in scheduling and they come in as a new hire and somebody says, this is how we do it, they, might, they may not realize that someone's telling them uh, the improper way to do it. So it's a combination of things. The bottom line is who's in charge 
And when you get a, a policy directive from VHA, do you enforce it or do you ignore it? I think that's the bottom line. Um, my, my time's expired, but let me say uh, once again, I thank you and your staff for the process you're going through. It is invaluable to our country's veterans and to the agency. Thank you.